Hello and welcome to Bulls Paint Club. It is 6.30 in the PM on the 8th of March 2021. What a year. I am joined today by Mr. Badger, that way. <laughs> and today we're going to be painting some Warhammer for you, like we do most weeks. Apologies that we missed last week. I had a bit of a, 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 a situation, <laughs> let's say. A dog, a dog based snafu. Yeah, that's fair to say. Anyway, I, um, I last time I started painting this fella, who will eventually look similar to this. Um, so I'm going to just touch this up, I'm going to stick it together, and then I'm going to start a, uh, I'm going to do one of his drones. Mr. Badger, what are you doing today? Uh, I will be carrying on with my Indominus box set with one of the Blade Guard Elites that come with it. The, what I believe is the Sergeant of the Squad. So, Lovely. if I actually manage to get through him in the stream, I'll be just touching up some uh, half painted Ultramarine spots. Oh! Ah, a pack of biscuits just went flying. I'm going to have to go and find them at some point. <clears throat> anyway, without further ado. Let us begin. I have brand new paint brushes. No, no, none. Very nice. So I've got no excuse for being terrible. Just gonna right, start the stream how I always start the stream, which is finding all of the paints, which I should have found um, before we started. But uh, I'm terrible. Well, you were busy doing other things. Yep. You were making sure the rest of the stuff was in place. <laughs> and at least the paints are easy enough to find. Hello, Mr. Richard. How are you today? Hello. You're very ah. welcome here. Every time. Where are we? Oh, that's me black. Mm, do we need white for anything? Got it out, just in case. Ah, uh, yes. Mr. Richard has... Uh, has to return to the world of work. Oh no. Finally the furlough ends. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a readjustment, man. It's gonna be a readjustment. Yeah. Apologies by the way guys, I forgot uh, I didn't get time to eat um, before the stream. And this came out of the oven like literally like 10 minutes before we started and it's uh, still not cool enough to eat so I'll be nomming on that as we go right fear not, <laughs> fear not indeed Ooh, do I want to make that hmm. okay got a plasma gun here and I'm tempted to make the whole sort of bell end region gold <laughs> Like it's got like black there, and then there's like just a little little bell end there with some exhaust pipe areas. I might make do that whatever, whole thing. Do whatever you want with your bell end, Dave. I shall. <laughs> first things first. There's a bit of black to be touching up with. Uh, so I don't need extreme. Uh, I don't need an extreme detail brush. Just like moderate. Brush yeah. Oh no. But yes, earlier earlier on in the day, uh, me, War Richard, and the good Mr. Mervelin yeah. uh, crunched what is currently the last boss on Valheim. Oh. Um, Congrats. So you've finished the game, basically. For the moment, yes. Oh. We did, however, go in completely arse first. <laughs> as, as we realised that most of our stuff was not very strong against them, mm. uh, and only Mev had uh, like a wacky stick which was in fact strong against him. Mm. While me and Richard were like running around like blue ass flies, Mev was getting some some stonk on. Nice. <laughs> Valheim related news. Nice segue. Um, it's now officially number two on Steam, only oh. only second behind uh, the old Counter Strike. Sexy boys. Yeah, four million users now, four million sales on Steam. 
Ooh. Dang, son, that's big. For a game that was essentially made by five dudes. Yeah, it's exploded, man. That game has exploded. Super sexy way. Yeah. So that's awesome, isn't it? So yeah. Bigger, bigger companies need to take a look at things like this. Mm. And you don't, and you don't need glow in the dark, bloody bollock hair graphics. Glow in the dark, yeah. bollock hair graphics. Yes. What the, game are you playing? <laughs> well, it's a, it could be a game for the future. Ooh. Maybe maybe that's what um, maybe that's that's what cyberpunk's missing. Well, you can pretty much get glow in the dark bollock hair. I mean, you can get floppy dog physics, but I'm not, I'm not seeing uh, any glow in the dark bo um, bollock hair. Give it a give it a moment, give it time. Yeah. It'll make its appearance. Well, this this is slightly old news, but since we segued towards um, cyberpunk. Apparently, the excessive number of dildos in the game was a coding error. Maximize the dong. Yep, someone had the wrong number in the code somewhere, and basically, dildos were spawning everywhere, which is the case, because, I mean, you just go on any roof, and you were guaranteed to find at least four dildos. The amount of dildos in that world is ridiculous. They had an extra zero in yeah. Like, oh no. Maximum dildosity. Too much for. Them. Maybe that's why I kept crashing. I just couldn't handle the amount of dildos. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what. That's why too, the game ran out, ran like shit. It was trying to spawn much, in a million dongs. Too much floppy dong physics. That's what it is. <laughs> oh dear. Nah, the. Uh, the reason that game ran like shit was 100% the um, the lighting. Mm. Yeah, they decided let's have real, uh, real, um, sing uh, oh, what's the word? Simulated lighting everywhere you go. And you're like, no, that's not necessary, especially in indoor areas. Oh my god, my graphics card's on fire. Yeah, and then they they sort of. Realised that it was never going to work when they uh, when they tried running it on uh, on the older hardware like the PS4 and the Xbox uh, One, and they was like, "Who knew? This isn't going to run." Can we like you know pair it back a bit? Mm. Nah. Fun times. Ah, oh, in uh, in other failure news, Anthem's dead. Finally, we all knew um, it was coming, but it's now dead. Official. Officially dunked. Yeah. Into the sea. They. Uh, Which is a real. It is actually a real shame for that whole game because I, honestly, I was looking forward to uh, some robot stompy, well, sort of mech suit stompy DACA action. Yeah, I'm. I'm and always it, up for that sort of gameplay. And then it sort of came out, and it was just not worth getting, essentially. No, it's. it's yeah, it was just a fucking uh, microtransaction-filled mess with um, <laughs> totally unbalanced combat, and you're just like, how do you fuck up that sort of game? Really? It was, it was Destiny, essentially. Yeah, they basically tried to make a Destiny, but not really Destiny. Um, honest gov. Cough, it's cough, still, cough. It still turned out to be Destiny. Oh no, what a coincidence. Yeah, and you just, I don't know. So it's finally dead. They um, they put the road map, the road map on hold, um, for like because they were reviewing it. And during the review, there was a meeting, and EA basically went, "Yeah, it's not making us any money. It's not. It, it's 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 dead. It was dead on arrival. Let's can this shit." You know what game? It should have been more like. Go on. Um, I know this might turn a bit weird. But Lost Planet? What planet? Lost Planet. It should have been more like Lost Planet. Ooh, is that the first person? Well, not first, the third person it's sort of tactical shooter. 
a third person kind of tactical shooter where you have to fight uh, big creatures to get yeah. their, their energy out of them and things like that. Um, yeah, I can see that. The I believe it was the third one. Hmm. Yeah, I think it was the third one. The third one had a multiplayer mode in it, where it was essentially co-op on the campaign. Yeah. Um, if they if they'd done it more like that, I reckon it would have been a lot better. Yeah. Like a, a, an actual multiplayer co-op, uh, single storyline with some extra like extra fluff in it right at the end so yeah like some proper end game continuous stuff like a, a war zone or territory grab so essentially you play the game with your buddies yeah and, until until the end and then you were sent then you pretty much unlock the pvp area well yeah you, then you unlock your uh, your pay paywall area Mm. Unfortunately, it didn't end up well. And uh, I have a prediction. It's not going to be a controversial prediction. I'm pretty sure everyone's going to know exactly what I'm about to say. Um, Marvel's Avengers is going to go the same way. Marvel's Avengers has pretty much already gone the same way, Dave. Yeah, it's it, it was dead on arrival. It's, it's, it's on its way there. It's not going to take as long as, um, as Anthem did to get there. It's not going to take as long as Anthem did to get there because the, everybody loves Marvel. This is the thing. It's got mm. so much more of a massive following behind it. Yeah. That, that it's ju it's just not going to... It's not going to live yeah. through that. So, yeah, it's... Um, that's... I, I think this is the end of, um, of live services as we know them. And um, the, uh, the, best fit, the best news... In, of the day is that Dragon Age is officially going to be a single player game now. Yep, they're, I saw that. Yep, they're repivoting uh, back to the original scope. So hopefully someone's got a copy of that game. You know, the uh, the, the one they developed years ago before they decided to turn it into a live service. Hopefully, hopefully someone's got it backed up on a hard drive somewhere. Probably on a pretty uh, USB stick. <laughs> the amount of work they put into it before it went to multiplayer central, like. Mm. So yeah, I want to play that game. I liked all the. Oh. Dragon Age Inquisition was a bit. Inquisition was wank. Inquisition was a nice improvement from the second one, most certainly, because the second mm. one just threw a lot of things out of the window mm. and made you go. What the fuck? Uh, I'm not so sure. I mean, right. I, I will mention who who was uh, the the awesome, cool witch lady's mother. Like, oh, honestly, I um, I can't essentially, remember. Essentially, in the first one, you met up with this when you got your your sorceress character, essentially mm -hmm. uh, companion. I yeah. Say. Her mother was just this old crotchety witch in a swamp who who was just sassy as shit and was amazing. She was just like what you would expect most grumpy old witches to be. Like it's like I, I'm okay, I'm good in my in my little hut in the middle of nowhere. And then all of a sudden these people decided that they wanted to get up in my face. So I fucked them up. <laughs> Here take my useless apprentice slash daughter slash whatever the fuck. Um and you know, save the world. Do whatever you want. She needs to learn more about the world and not be in my face constantly. And then at the beginning of the second one, for some reason, she turned into like this super, like awesome sort of young woman with ridiculous hair, um, who was like, "Yeah, don't worry about this shit. I've got this. Now get to this island in the middle of no nowhere." Okay. She sort of saves your your main character at the beginning of the second one, and then just. You never hear anything back. It's like it's completely changed the character from the crotchety old witch in the swamps mm. to this ass kicking, laser firing. Well, if you've ever seen the, the start of the second one, it, it also links into like 
the end of the storyline for her in the first one. Yeah. But she, she she's she's really she's not human. Let's no. just say that she's not human. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I I I, I don't really. Uh, I never really got 100 percent into Dragon Age. I played the first one for a while. Uh, realized it was basically the every mission line was going to be exactly the same for every town, and uh, I think it. I think it, I dropped uh, once I got to the dwarven town. I was like, uh, yeah, the, the dwarven section was a bit of a a bollock egg, really. Yeah. The only the only thing that kind of kept people playing that game was essentially playing the different classes. Yeah. Every start was different for every race, for every thing that they chose, every class that they chose. Yeah. And and then it was just... I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I, I enjoyed what I played of it, but um, I'd pl- I had I never completed it. And I've, I remember finishing it and having no desire to go back and complete it. It took me so long to complete it. Yeah. But I, I did get there, and I, I started off with generic face smashing mm-hmm. character, so let, let's just say went in, human fighter kick dick, saved the day didn't give no shits after that really, tried replaying a few times with different flavours, Yeah, but couldn't could never really stay with it because mm. it was essentially me playing the same game over and over again there was very very little difference in it even, I mean, you got some flavor text because you were a different race, because you were a different class. Mm-hmm. But it, yeah, I do understand how you you never really got got through it. Yeah, it just I don't know. It was extremely repetitive, from what I remember, and uh, I just I just I was done with it. Like I do, I, I do love Mass Effect. Mass Effect is is brilliant. Um, Dragon's Age, Dragon Age never really caught me in the same way. I think it was because it was a fantasy setting over the sci-fi PP. Probably, I, I do enjoy my me a sci-fi setting. So I'm trying to catch the light here and see what I'm doing. So oh, yeah, I think, yeah. Speaking of um, of things like that, we'll segue onto our next wonderful. Potentially wonderful piece of news. Oh, okay. Which is Microsoft buying Zenimax. Okay. All, all the shiny pennies, uh, approximately seven point five billion for the whole. Lot. Yeah. So Microsoft are, are getting real aggressive with the buying of studios. They are getting real aggressive with the buying of studios. I'm not one hundred percent sure it's a good thing. I'm thinking it's. We'll we'll have to see what this is like. Yeah. It mean it means that they have acquired enough stuff that they have reunited some older uh, developers on that. Okay. It's because they have Bethesda and Obsidian. Yeah. Under their belt, which. Hi, I mean, the article itself had like a few ridiculous possibilities from them buying all these stuff. But they they also said that there is the possibility that um was it Fallout Vegas two? Maybe. Might have a put a chance to exist at some point in time? Yeah, Fallout New Vegas was absolutely the best Fallout so that's, that's uh, that that Bethesda ever released. That is something that can come from this we they they've got ID software. Yeah. ID software, so they have the Doom license. They do. I don't know. I just um, I can't see Microsoft owning this and then not not trying to bully Sony with it. They're just gonna wave it in their face and be like, you know, look look what we got, yo. Yeah. Look what we got. Are you gonna Are you gonna do stuff? Are you gonna do something? With it? Yeah, you see, I just, I don't know. For me, it, it's never been a problem, 
because I've had a PC that can run all these games, but now my PC's aging and I probably can't run them anymore. Well, the likelihood is you'll just have to polish that, uh, that boy up again at some point. Yeah, get the old, get but, the old girl running. But at the minute, I you know, can't get hold of a, a graphics card for love nor money. So it might actually become more cost effective just to buy a bloody um, Series X. No, I'm talking about Series X. Ooh. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to use. I mean, I I can use keyboard and and mouse on the Xbox One. So if you find a, a couple of games where you're like, uh, I'm not so sure about that, yeah. you can always transfer onto the different control settings and enjoy them regardless. But then, then you've got to think, what are you most likely to get from them? Are you going to get physical copies or digital copies? Or mm. See, I do like to buy physical copies where I can, but uh, obviously PC gaming has just killed physical um, media. PC gaming essentially no longer has physical media anymore. Yeah, and, the re and, and you know what? Phys the, the, the lack of physical media is the reason why I'm so, um, I'm so pro-Steam. Because of what, like, physical media, I keep on a shelf. I've got a collection. Um, whereas if I bought things on Epic Game Store, the collection would be split, and I wouldn't be able to see it all in one place. And I know GOG, GOG Universe exists, but no. Yeah. I mean, technically, they're still working on GOG Universe. Oh no. no. Recently got round to the, the 2.0 variant of it. So. Yeah, and it's a, by all by all accounts, it's a good service, but I don't want to have to jump through hoops. So I'd rather just keep it all in one place. Yeah, I, I would like to keep everything in, in one place, but uh, just looking at my computer now, even after I've recently updated it, I've essentially had to reinstall the, uh, the Ubisoft player okay the, the fucking i've got gog on there here i've got steam i've got the epic store do you, do you i mean do you have to have the full version of the uh of you play I, I think I, I think it's just the half arse version of you play that yeah, i've got on it that's probably that's like two meg or something ridiculous yeah but it's literally still, just like authenticating that you own the product that's all it's doing it's still me with another thing on the desktop and that's well, you don't have on your desktop. That's not even before I've got um, the battle mats thing back up. Yeah. For me, Di Diablo. But uh, obviously, did I mention that I already had Steam on there? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, I've got the Steam. Well, I mean, um, you have got BattleNet because you've uh, you've played Overwatch with us it's yes. on your new rig. I had to update that boy. Yeah. Um, I believe that at some point I'll need to get fucking Origin back or whatever. I don't think you do much. actually. Origin, um, I think EA have finally just seen sense and have abandoned that shit. It's whether or not they've condensed it into another thing for all the people who bought games on Origin because I actually quite quite a nice synchronized thing here. I have Dragon Age Inquisition on the Origin thing. Okay. Because it didn't exist in Steam, so that's yeah, kind of they're releasing all the games on um, on Steam now. But I suppose if you've already bought them on on one, you don't necessarily want to buy it again. Yeah, I, I don't have like fifty copies of the th same game just because I don't I don't see the need to have fifty copies of the same. Well, yeah, game. I mean technically, I mean I, I think I've I've got a couple of games on. Um, on Origin that I don't have on uh, on Steam, but they're not games that I'm going to install Origin for. If you get what I mean, yeah. Like I'm I'm not. Uh, it's 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 like Battlefield Three, Battlefield Four, Battlefield Five. You know, those are the only games really that I bought on uh, on Origin. So I, I'm not I'm not going to reinstall Origin just for them. That'd be ridiculous. Um, two, two weeks later, Dave. Fuck! I did it, Patrick. I did it. Nah, no. Why did I do it? To be honest, um, now now the the Battlefield games are going so cheap, I could just rebuy them on Steam. That'd be nice. 
So, so yeah, that's... Um, oh yeah, I've got Battlefront 2, actually. That's the only game that is potentially going to be um, re-downloading Origin 4. I think they gave me that for like a quid or something. Probably. Are you alright there, Luke? Dog's just having a little bit of a cough behind me. Because he wants your uh, shepherd's pie. He does. He wants all of that shepherd's pie. He's like, I'm ill, Dave. I'm ill. <laughs> give, give me a tasty treat, Dave. Give me pie, Dave. Even though it is probably still a billion degrees in temperature. No, it's it's falling fast, which means I need to actually eat it at some point. <laughs> Otherwise it'll be cold pie. Anyway, I've just finished tidying up. So I'm at the point now where once it's dry, I can start to um, stick it together. Oh, yeah. Oh. So, yeah. Oh, blimey. What else was on the docket? The death of Anthem. Yeah, we've, we've, so we've, we've spoken of that. That was on the docket where there was... Oh, they, I've got one. So... I know it's a bit old now, but I just wants to wants to point out that time that Metallica um, played a gig on Twitch, and their stream got muted and replaced with MIDI music because because it got demonetized. Yeah, and DMC struck for them playing their own music. Mm -hmm. And this is why. It is an absurdity that artists don't own their own music. And um, you've, got these, um, you've got these companies, these hedge funds that are going out and buying like successful artists' back catalogues, like buying the rights to them so that they can, they can take the royalties. Uh, I think Bob Dylan recently sold his. Um, and it's just it's disgusting do you know what I mean it's just gonna it's gonna kick people in the face and then what's gonna happen is artists are just gonna stop producing well, music they're just gonna stop and go okay no I'm in charge of this it should have always been like that to be to be honest I don't and think they're gonna stop producing music they're just gonna stop selling the rights to their music eventually and they might ask radio stations not to play their music, like anything before X album. Yeah, that could be that could be something that will will occur. Is they'll just go, okay, okay, just don't play my music anymore. Mhm. Mm you do it, and I'm gonna. Because because what happens is, they will demonetize whatever channel you're playing a gig on. Like so, Metallica got paid to do something. They started playing a gig because they don't own the music. Whoever did own the music got the lawyers on the phone, and Blizzard um, had the had their stream deactivated. Which is a bit of a bell end. Hmm. Because they've gone out of their way to contact the uh, the artists themselves. Just highlights okay. what a joke the music copyright system is. Yep. It's like when when you had the your, um, your you know rights cleared music on your stream, and then it wasn't rights cleared for no reason. Yep. So I ended up with a huge chunk of bloody stuff muted. It was mm -hmm. like, oh, seriously, guys. Classical music seems to be okay, but I think mm. it's very very difficult for people to. It's because people can't essentially make a massive amount of money off. Of that kind of yeah. music, it's, there's no singing, there's no, well, there, there isn't really like a, a definable vocals. Mm -hmm. A lot of classical music and opera style music does does have vocals, mm -hmm. but half of it, half of it is in like public public domain, isn't it? Exactly. Of it. Right. Let's. Uh, do you know what? Carry the stream for a sec. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to put this um, this in the kitchen, otherwise the dogs will not stop harassing me. They're not going to stop harassing me anyway, Dave. If it's not treats, it's fuss. If it's not fuss, it's treats. If it's not 
either of those, it's just because they want to. Because this is how the dogs work. Right. So while while the good Sir Dave is away delivering his things back to the kitchen, hostile takeover. But no, I wouldn't do that. I would never do that. Or would I? Nah, I'm too lazy to do that. Oh, for, for the time being, I'm kind of starting to get all the bits filled in on this bad boy. Hoping that I haven't really missed anything yet. Get a bit of a clean on the brush. Ooh. Pardon me. I realized I've missed some of the blue bits, but that's okay because I'll be coming back to those later when I do the touch up. Get a bit of this red going. And start filling in some of the details, some of the blockier, more blobby sections. Like all these wax seals on the purity seals. gonna say I thought I heard the sounds of a Dave return but not yet not yet right um, just trying to figure out what I need to well what I can talk about to be honest I prefer the Dave here for the time being I'm just gonna have to wing it because I'm pretty sure that we do have more things to talk about but I can't remember apologize if it does go a bit quiet well actually I think uh, I think Dave has his background MIDI beats going. It won't be 100% quiet. Also, why did that do that? Uh, annoying painting. And your brush decides it wants to be an octopus. I really, really should get some brushes new brushes of my own at some point i mean i do still have like a few untouched brushes from my conquest set but as i've spoken beforehand i don't really oh hello mike welcome back I'm just making mention once more about the fact that I need to get myself some actual brushes and my dislike of the uh, Citadel miniatures ones. Yeah, these ones are okay. I was just about to ask, it leads me on to, to questioning your, uh, your own brushes. How are you finding them and are they comfortable to use? They are very comfortable to use. Um, the one I picked, um, I think I've put the cap back on wrong. And uh, it's it made a couple of bristles like turn oh. outwards. Uh, so that's sad times for me. But uh, yeah, I have uh, I have fixed it now. Right now, let's see if I can remember how this goes together. Huh. Or do I need the instruction manual back? Okay. <laughs> Oh, I, know, I know how these go together, so I'll do that at least. Okay. Uh, I should probably tilt the camera down a bit so you can actually see what I'm doing. So you won't. Be ah! able to... You won't be able to see my face, but you'll be able to see me, uh, me hands and me sprues. Got myself a cup of tea while I was there. Oh, which is very hot. Stay there. Stay out of the way so you don't dip your paintbrushes in it. 
Yeah, all, accident. all my fingers. I'll lose a bit of plastic in there. Okay. That would be such a sword. As you ping it off and it just lands straight in your teeth. <laughs> like, ah, oh, come on. I'm sure it's happened to someone somewhere. It's like, oh, let's do this. I've got this, guys. Pew. Fuck. Bing. I really shouldn't have washed my brush just yet. Because I know for a fact that there's going to be... Yep, there it is. There's the purity seal on the body. Warm. Come on, get in there. So, um, yeah, we talked about that. What, what else is, is going on in the world? The fucking news, I suppose we should go on to. Well, at the moment, the, the most recent thing that I've heard about is the, um, the interview with... Oh, uh, yeah. Harry and Meghan Markle and Oprah, where yeah. they were sort of like named members of the the household, which would be kind of racist and kind of assholes. Shock horror. Oh, yes. I mean, to be fair, if you don't don't want to be bullied, um, don't marry into the royal family. They have a long history of uh, abhorrent however, behavior. However, the Queen has been sort of technically like exonerated of like all of these things purely because you know Meghan and Harry are being like yeah yeah she's been a really really awesome person but, uh, yep I can I can agree with that uh, big old granny granny Elizabeth yeah I mean she's not been amazing I mean she has um, protected a paedophile so that's fun. It it seems like it's the cool thing to do these days. <laughs> Not necessarily the best thing to do, but no. True dash. Like everybody has had to attempt to take a blow in order to maintain unity, essentially. Yeah. I just need to make sure I'm attaching the right thing to the right thing here. Some glue going down. Okay, that's that one. And I Obviously, to... oh shit. Like any celebrity, not just head of state, they have to be very, very careful with how they react. Oh yeah. They'll, they'll, they probably won't even comment on it. I think they will. I think they will comment, but what I believe will happen is there will potentially be the scapegoat. Mm. Like, we are very, very sorry for all of this. Nothing was truly meant by these comments. We have had to deal with blah, 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 X, Y, Z in such a fashion. And we hope that something like this never, never happens again. And let us move forward as one, you know, yeah. so that we can be all be part of the same happy, shiny family. Ah, oh, it's fun, fun and games. I need to, I'm going to need to look at the finished model to see what goes where now. Yep. Did, I was going to say, did you find your instructions? I have the instructions. I'm just I'm going to try and do this without them. Dangerous. This this sounds like a, an IKEA special. Yeah. yeah. You're going to have six screws remaining and one plank. <laughs> you, you have no idea where where it's gone. And can you heavens find the Allen key? Uh, and then. Okay, so that goes there. That's the other side of it. Yeah, no need the instructions. <laughs> um, I think I put them in the box, didn't I? Oh no, they're there. They're right in front of me. Eep. Instructions. Okay, 
are actually taking purity seals and which aren't. Yeah. And just end up, I think, normal plates with a white color and stiff or exit. Which is, of course, not the best thing. Mm. Ooh, I'll tell you something about um, something that I've, that I've, uh, I've done this week. I have um, rediscovered two things this week. Uh, I've started watching Bojack Horseman again. Oh. And I'm not a hundred percent certain, but I know my I know my myself enough to know that that has uh, disturbing implications for my mental health, <laughs> even if I don't feel it. If you know what I mean. They're those they're those kind of weird, surreal like adulty cartoons that do actually speak a lot about those things. It's a it's an extremely good show, Jack Horseman. I absolutely adore it. Um, I just uh, I just know that it's gonna it's gonna break me. <laughs> you can sit there and you be like, oh, I remember these bits. Mm. Like, oh. Yeah, it's a bit like um, like it's like got the same level of like just unrelenting. Um, Realism as like the likes of Black Mirror, that sort of thing. Even though uh, like Black Mirror is essentially sci-fi, but it's like it tells such a tr like a such a true human story. Isn't Black Mirror that one with different scenarios? Yeah, that every episode's a different scenario. Yeah, and it gets real rough. <laughs> Oh yes. I think this. I think I. Uh, I actually stopped watching it um, after the second episode. I was like, no, no, I am not mentally strong enough to watch this shit. Let, let me just back away from this until yeah. I can. You know. I was like, I'll come back to this later. But uh, I don't think I have come back to it yet properly. Well, watching it in bloody lockdown. Yeah. Not the best yeah. idea. Be a bit um, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the the uh, the second thing is a very positive thing. Uh, I just I discovered that um, King Crimson is now on Spotify. When mm -hmm. I joined Spotify, it wasn't there, and I was very sad about that because uh, they were one of my favourite bands. It's one of those things mm -hmm. where because Spotify is so convenient. It just means that I've not listened to King Crimson for years now. And now you can get back into that glorious love. Yeah, so today I listened to uh, basically the 60s and 70s albums, well, early 70s. I'm up to the. Um, oh, I've, I've just finished listening to Shadow of the. Ah, God damn Shadow of the Beast or something? No, it's. Uh, in the in the shadow of ah, one of the Greek gods, Poseidon. There you go. In the wake of Poseidon. In the wake of Poseidon. There you go. I was about to say I was just going to start reeling off Greek gods there, but you just no. Uh, it's a, in the in the wake of Poseidon. Uh, that was a I think it was nineteen seventy three album. It's like, oh, the, oh, and that's like the third or fourth album, and um, it's it's ridiculous, man. They. They they recorded stuff in the sixties and seventies that still sounds like contemporary nowadays. It is the truest example of like prog that you can get. It's very very difficult these days to get a sound like that anymore. Yeah. That that essentially is uh, you know, a timeless sound. Mm-hmm. Because you know, for the most part. I mean, I don't. I, I listen to a lot of like me older stuff. So I say me older stuff. I listen to things like Edema and, and Disturbed mm. and all that. So. But when I go to work, the radio is controlled by people who listen to Kiss and Heart Radio. Yeah. So it's all this pseudo hip hop pop stuff that comes on. It all, it all right. sounds identical. So when you actually get back to finding something that just just hasn't aged yeah 
it'll it's... always it'll always make you feel happy to listen yeah. to you. And I just I absolutely adore them, King Crimson. And you know what? I think I I I loved them back in, back in uni. And uh, I always put it down to me just being pretentious and you know a hipster basically and uh, no no it, it, it's uh, do you know what if anything i i appreciate them more now the second time around if you get what i mean yeah it's um it's just beautiful to listen to and i'm very happy that i've uh, started listening to them again so yeah i'm gonna go through the um se uh, late 70s and 80s 80s is where it starts to get real good they uh Free of a Perfect Pair is a fantastic album, and I really like Frack, even though a lot of um, King Crimson fans say that that's where they went a bit off the rails. Maybe that's just what some people need. Yeah. Like, they had real heavy jazz influences, um, and then Frack is, like, where they just sort of went to do a sort of more, you know, straightforward rock album. Hmm. And um, yeah, a lot of people, uh, from from what I've read anyway, a lot of people didn't really like that because they were like, "Oh no, it's, it doesn't it doesn't even sound like King Crimson anymore." It's just too different. <laughs> and then you're like, yes, yes, it is. But it's good. Oh hello, robot attack, <laughs> robot attack. Oh. Want to become famous? No. No thanks. I'm good. Yeah. Bullbot's safe. He's fine. He's a, he's a sanctioned robot. I think I missed some bits. I certainly did. Okay, so what's next? I need to stick these little side bits into here. And they need to be with that bit facing the knob. Hi, Bear. Hello. So hello to the ladies and gentlemen. I see that too. Your balls are going to come off tomorrow. He doesn't even know. He doesn't even know. Well, he's got one ear down, so I think he might. Mm. Yeah. If something is afoot. It is ball off day tomorrow. Which is good. I think we won't have a repeat of the... Uh... Yeah. And so. last week. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it means that uh, we get a new lamp tomorrow. As he'll come back with his cone of shame. And it'll be hilarious. You know who's going to have the best time about that? Who's that? Luke. <laughs> yeah. Now you'll probably shout at him thinking he's an intruder or something. Like, what is this? What is this lampshade? douche in, in my house what is this mobile lampshade I don't <laughs> like it I'm an old man I can't handle change right so that's the Ooh. back of it done and painting it on the sprue was so much easier who would have funk it exactly I, I sit here and I'm looking at the the main body of this this guy and it's <clears> on a <throat> little handhold thing yeah, I'm still painting the majority of the model <laughs> on the bloody sprue. Oh dear. Actually, at this at this point, I'm probably going to have to start uh, taking it off the sprue. Oh well. Oh right. Okay. Uh, apparently, it's time to do the legs next. So I need my base, my Big buttery bin. biscuit base. Here, grab grandpa. Quick swig of swig of room, because apparently it's very very warm in here today. Mm. Nice problems to have. I wish it was warm in here. But it ain't. Nice. What was I missing? A couple of these. A bit of scroll work. And they're still gone. Because of 
forgot that he had one on his shoulder pad. Let's get the old feet there. Concentration. Yes. Hey, do you know what? I actually think I was I was right first time. Uh, I don't think that is supposed to be a foot, uh, but it acts to, uh, in a way to stabilize it so like you can actually put weight on it yeah I mean it's got it's supposed to have three forward toes yeah I think a, a rear toe it's got it's got like a little stub a little knob yeah. but it's not really a toe it doesn't go all the way down But I've painted it and it looks alright. Oh no, I've chopped a bit too much off of it. Never mind. That's fine. It'll paint fine. Anyway, so I need the leggy bits, which are there. Oh yeah. See, I've been doing that a lot during lockdown, like finding a band that I've not listened to in years and just annihilating their entire back catalogue. Well, that was actually something that, that I've also caught on, but only with um, Edema. Okay. But, and the reason for that is I've, I've been looking through some of the old playlists that I had on Spotify, and, you know, junking the, the ones that I don't really listen to anymore. Yeah. And for some reason it has my very old... Like this is Spotify itself has my very very old Winamp playlist. Nice. And obviously I can't access it. Yeah. Because I would assume that most of the stuff on there no longer exists as a, as a file type, so therefore it's just got the names on it. But a lot of things popped up, and I was like, I'll have a look at those again. I'll have a look at these again. And Edema was like obviously at the top of the list because it starts with A. Yeah. And I just I just listened to a few of their their older albums and I'm like, ah, oh, I remember all the things that go with these. <laughs> For instance, the song Immortal was the main theme tune from uh, Mortal Kombat Deception. When you first saw Quan Chi. And all that, and I'm like, oh god, I remember that game. <laughs> I, I, I just, it's it's so good. Like back in the day, I, what I used to do was I used to um, go on Last FM and basically just scrabble everything I was listening to, and then listen to absolutely every recommendation it gave me. Yeah, I remember you uh, actually suggesting that to me. As yeah, well. it's so good, and it it still works with Spotify. But uh, Spotify does quite a decent job these days of uh, of Covering doing the, all the and things. yeah, doing all the recommendations itself, mm. which is quite good. Like I, every, every week, I check out the recommendations, and there's usually like two or three songs a week that I uh, I'm like, mm, yeah, that's good. Quite nice. Uh, your progress is actually looking quite good for the moment, Dave. So far, Let's yeah. I need to actually get this foot sorted. Ever since we got everything. Oh shit! Up here. No! Oh, super glue going everywhere. Oh no! He gets. Nightmare! Nightmare! Oh, we'll get, we'll get red alert. Oh Christ on a bike. Okay. Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, things were going okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't even know which side this stuff's going on now, so I think it's that way. Oh, do you know what? I'm just gonna let it let it dry and try again. So I need to get the feet in a place where I can actually stick them. Just hold them together. Yeah. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Some little uh, sippity sippity tea. No, no, no. Yeah, Termi and Catalot was one of those bands that I found through uh, last last demo. Which you also uh, introduced to me, and I was like, yes, I'll have me some of that. Yeah. Uh, Zeke, Zeke was one. Um, I introduced them to Phil. That was Indian good. Enough. Yeah. I think it's like the one recommendation I, I made to him that that he actually like really enjoyed. <laughs> in the world am I going to get this done okay so is it going to be worth you actually so I can't put, stick the feet to the base put the hips together first yeah well I can't put the fit of the hips together until I sort of know what angle the legs work at because you know otherwise it'll be just at a weird angle yeah so I need to like make it roughly okay so the bent one goes backwards and the Okay, so I'm thinking roughly that'll do. Maybe. I need to get the feet in the right place. Ish. So that the ball sockets fit. Um, maybe I just put the feet. Do I put the feet down and then. Hope for the best. Mm, no, I wouldn't put the feet down and hope for the best. <laughs> All right, I'll do one hip at a time, and I hope I get it right. If I don't, I'll have to snap. Okay. The thing is, don't the hip joints have their own specific pegs that they work with? Uh, no. I don't think so, anyway. No, they don't. Okay, I've got the blue out again. Give me touch ups. Oh shit, I've got, it, I've got it the wrong way around. On um, EGATS. By the gods. Bye. Okay, so that. So that's the front, okay. Progress is being made. Uh, I'm so confused right now. Yes, okay. So. Stay on there like that, please. No, that's not sticking. AIDS! Okay. This one's going to shove a load of glue on the ball there. I'm just going to make sure it fits in somewhere. For now, for now. Yeah. My goodness me. Stay, stay. Okay. So that'll be there. Like that. Be a little more heavy handed with this. Because I know I'm going to be touching up the silver at some point. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> oh man. Yeah, I um, I got real drunk on uh, on Saturday during the uh, booze control stream. I did. I saw the image of your overturned vehicle, Mr. Dave. Yeah, it ended predictably. <laughs> you don't drink and drive, yo. Yeah. I am a war I'm a human advert for not drinking and driving. It's 
Especially when you're in control of large vehicles. Indeed. Well, large vehicles are bad. Okay, so if I just... Uh, so I can't dunch it anywhere. Okay, now comes the tough bit. Need to shove that up there like that. Oh well, wow, this is Done it the wrong way. Okay, I think that's that's stuck there. It's got legs stuck to the, the bodice. Now I need to uh, display the feet properly and then get more glue. You need free hands for this job. Yes. But I would feel that the only way you can get that is by uh, supplicating the siege. <laughs> He'll happily give you extra hands. Not necessarily in useful places, but yeah. he'll give you those extra hands. to the base yet, but yeah. I agree. You have them in position. Yes. Okay. Whilst that does that. Um, okay. Uh, it says it is supposed to snap. Into, into something, but I can't see the thing that's supposed to snap into. It'll move me, uh, I'll move me name to the top. Oh, hello, Luke. Oh, how can I help you today? No, don't lift that, it's got glue on it. Hello. Glorious hand. Yeah. Don't let the paint <laughs> either. Paint is bad for you. My goodness. He's got his fancy pink jumper on today. What you doing? Watch out. Go back. Good boy. Right. So, what's next? I need to put the, uh... Ah... I think I'll, uh, I can make one of them fly. If I want. Do you have the, um... Yeah, I've got a, um, a... The flying base. Yeah, a little flying thing. It's the same base, you just use a little, uh... Little plasticky tube thing. This needs now to go on there. Lovely. Trying to get all this fiddly. It's a lot more fiddly this model than I originally thought it was going to be. Yeah. Ooh. 
Oh, that's not where it goes. Well, that's where it goes. Yes. Haha. -ha. What else am I painting going? Yes, the whole exterior border of the shield. Okay, the next thing is the top end of the body. So I need to get the front plate chopped off. Which is Gloriousness. Indeed. Ooh. Yeah, I was drinking. Uh, I was drinking rum on Saturday, and uh, yeah, <laughs> suddenly it ended badly. It is so nice to be streaming again, by the way. It is. What was your journey, though? Where did um, you go? It was. From one of the uh, Scandinavian countries uh, up towards St. Petersburg area. Can't remember what the uh, the one that's right next to Russia is called. Is it Norway? Uh, Norway, Finland, I think, and Sweden are in that area. Yeah, I just I, I just uh, can't remember what the one that's actually bordering uh, Russia is called. I think that's Finland. Yeah. So I was in Finland and then uh, and we headed over towards uh, Le Mans in France, taking some uh, a big shipment of cars, which didn't arrive. It arrived sideways, Dave. It, I got within 200 miles. And then the, the drunkenness got too much. Yes, I took. A, I tried to take a corner at speed, and uh, yeah, I couldn't slow down quick enough. In fact, some may say that you slowed down too fast. <laughs> Indeed. So yeah, that was a. Uh, it was an, a hectic stream. Daddy dropped in for a little bit, and I think Richard joined us uh, later on when I was very drunk. You, you know how I think it played out in my head, because obviously I wasn't in it. Aye. I, all, I, all I can hear is you going, oh, this, this is all get oh, really good. He's making good time there, lasers are like, okay, we've just got this big corner and then we'll be at this this point and we can take a rest stop and all that stuff. <laughs> and then, oh, fuck! Yeah, it was pretty much, we can do this, I believe! We're within 200 miles now! Yay! Slam! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Right. Ooh, what do we do now? Right, we have to stick the. Uh... I reckon you would have been more annoyed at the fact that you dodged your shiny truck than you had. Uh... <laughs> oh, no, that truck has taken many poundings. Exactly. The fact that you flipped the thing. You're like, oh, my paint scheme. Oh, Rather no. than the, uh, the cars scattered all over the highway. <laughs> yeah. I oh, know the cars luckily stayed where they were. Um, not 100% realistic, but, you know, I, I don't suppose the game was uh, programmed for crashes. <laughs> you, you would think that it might be, considering what it is. I mean, it's uh, it's it, it 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 works okay when you're like smashing into things, but I don't think it's designed to have um, upside down mode. In, uh... Yeah, it, it's it's there for impact over. Uh... Yeah. Annihilation. Well. Oh shit! Courses. Could have, uh, I could have gone through my foot, and that has gone somewhere. A very small piece has just gone flying. Oh, 
It's colored brown and the floor is brown. <laughs> oh no. So it's slow, Dave. Yeah. <sighs> My microphone's pretty clipped on my computer. Have I been really quiet this whole time? Yeah, you've been fine all this time. Oh, that's alright then. I'm gonna go and find this piece of uh, plastic. It's just on the floor. Oh, wherever it's gone. F in chat for good luck. Where is it? What else was I doing? I don't need the bread. Oh, me I'm an idiot. I still do need the bread. Why do I do this to myself? I look at a piece and I'm like, yeah, I need to do this with it, and then I wash the brush because I've done a different piece, and then I'm like, oh, I still didn't do the first bit. Still didn't do the first bit. I don't need any more on this. Should only need a touch of silver to fix some of my squiddy bits. And the shield. Covered in many, many squishy parts. There is a lot of fine detail on this, and a lot of flat spaces. Where is the boy? Are you enlisting the help of your dogs? I think Bear knows where it is. What inside Bear? Well, it will be if I if I leave it too long. You found no, it? it? No. Well, this uh, this guy's not going to have kneecaps. Sad face. Unless it's Maybe. somehow pinged around and then landed on the desk. You may not have a kneecap. Uh, I don't want to put any kneecaps on if I'm not going to get both. It'll be a case that you'll find it later. Probably in and dog. then you can put both his kneecaps on. Yeah, probably in dog poo. Oh no. Yeah, no. You definitely can see something over here somewhere. Dogs have a good like that, they've got good eyes. Better sniffers. Yeah. Right. Well, at least I can put these on for him. Okay. I can start putting this guy together. Oh, excellent. And then he inevitably he will get completely washed. And there will be highlights. I completely forgot once again, but I can do that after I've done the wash. Right. Alrighty then. I did not do everything. There is still a tiny bit that I did not do. Because <coughs> I've actually spent more time focusing on the front of the body than I have on the back. There's a couple of ammo containers, mm -hmm. little packages. I need to paint on his butt. 
Speaking of book, one of my legs is going numb. <laughs> Bit of a stretch. Feel like getting all tingly again. Yeah. Ah, there we go. There we go. Right. Ah, we're gone. Okay, so that's the front of it. So that's where that goes. Boop. What a dick. I'm sure I haven't injured myself. Oh no, I'm good. Oh, his leg's a bit gammy. Not sure if you can see it, his, uh, his bent leg is sort of like a bit weirdly... Uh, Sticky-yoky. Yeah. I think actually I've put that on the wrong angle. In order to to justify that weird, weirdly bent leg, I'm going to have him twisted this way. Yes. It's not good. This is the problem with these push together models. So when he's uh, head on, you'll be able to see he's bent his leg so that you can you can pivot round. Right. Oh, the lack of kneecaps is doing my head in. I want to find it. I want to find the tiny piece that I've, that's just pinged off into the universe. Dave, Dave, are you wearing slippers? Yes. Remove the slippers. Because <laughs> inevitably you'll stand on the fucking thing and be like, ah, oh God. It is not in that slipper. No, it's not in the slippers. More, more a case of you will inevitably find it when you stand up to get something. Yeah. Oh my god, Paddy. You're a fucking mind reader. It was attached to the butt with a fucking slipper. Oh my god. Spring. Yes. I think that I've done this before. <laughs> Too many times. Oh man, that's that's okay. glorious. Uh, also, yeah. It's also it's it's both glorious and uh, and horrific because I've just like all of the uh, the paint's been scuffed off it. Oh no! Right, where's the uh, clippers gone? There, there they are. Right, this time I'm gonna like cover this as I as I cut it so that it can't ping anywhere. Grasp it between your finger and. It's such a tiny piece that I'd probably cut myself. There we go, done. Right, so kneecaps. Uh, which way up did I put it on that one? Oh, this one's got different kneecaps on. There's different kneecaps? Hmm. Each model must have slightly, slightly different parts. Huh. Right. Here we go. So let's just pop kneecap glue, kneecap glue. Speaking of glue, did a bit of damage to the, the backpack. Oi noi. Indeed, oi noi. Which means that I've had to uh, position a touch of glue on it in order to keep the the golden star that is on the top of his 
backpack stuck on. So all we need to do now is attach arms, which again is a big reason why I don't 100% like these instant stick together models. Mm. Because half of the time the bloody pegs are either too long or too tight. Inevitably meaning that you have to chop the bastards off. Uh, at least they tried. I mean the uh, the pegs on this one seem to be alright. That is one of the standard multi-part models so the pegs are fine on that one there. But with the the fast build, mm. like the quick build ones, then not so much. Fair enough. Right, so we know which uh, side the arms are at, so let's just grab. Ooh. Ooh. There we go. Glue, 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 glue. Okay. I'll whack that on. Okay, so it was a bit of no oil that I used on edges of the shield. So that I can actually get some definition on them. Alrighty then. This guy has arms. I need to get the head stuck together now. And the shoulder plate. I actually paint this metallic section in the middle. Yeah. Oh Did shit. We usually do this at the beginning, don't we? Uh, how was your week? My week has been pretty good, actually. Nice. Um, nice. It's been busy mm. for the most part. But it's just your week back, wasn't it? You had a week off last week. Yes, I did have a week off. Which, in its own right, was glorious. Nice. I saw you playing a lot of Valheim. <laughs> to be honest, when I, when I get into something like that, it just absorbs my time. Yeah, I'm so jealous. I'm still really jealous of the amount of time you guys have had to pour into it. But, you know, that's a me problem. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Run around, do the things. Kick some ass. Yeah. Get my ass kicked from on the regular because as much as I'm kind of okay at it, I'm still god awful. Come on, you're not that bad. <clears throat> you, have you got any time off uh, coming, or is that was that it? Uh, the time, well, that was the first week that I had off um, for my yearly holidays. Mm. Uh, I have some coming up in April. I'll have a week off at the beginning of April, then I'll have a week off in the end of June, I think. Nice. And then I believe I've got my birthday week off again. Yay. So it's September. Sure. Hey, your birthday's going to be perfectly timed. We're definitely going to be out then. I've already just say that. Hey, mine's in May and they're saying that we're going to be allowed out for my birthday, but I doubt it. I'd be very, very surprised. Yeah. Honestly, I would be very surprised if anything happened in... Like, any, anything substantial happened in May. Yeah. I might try and do a, a barbecue, but... Don't know, no. don't know who'd come, or who'd be allowed to come. Everybody just crams into your house. Yeah, to be fair, it'll be uh, about the time when they're going to start letting uh, people out. And uh, people will be uh, dying to go outside. 
Not sure pubs will be quite uh, up and running yet, but... I believe that at right the, about the halfway point of April, pubs should be... In fact, I'm pretty sure they're going to be open for beer garden stuff hmm. um, very soon. Well, that's cool. There is a there's a, there's a there's a couple of pubs around here that have got really good beer gardens. Uh, yeah. So, but they'll be fucking round. Of course, everybody will be like, ah, I could go to the beer garden. Yeah. And then everybody will be like, oh, everybody's at the beer garden. Yeah. They'll probably end up having to uh, make it so you have to uh, book it or something. Yeah. I, I believe they still have the rule of six. No. Yeah. <clears throat> so not everything will be like one hundred percent. I mean, it's pretty pretty much normal for me because I don't think I've got a, a a single group of friends that's more than six. Just go out, just kick kick back, chill with, with the dudes and the ladies. Yeah. Oh, this isn't gonna come off very easily. This is a touch, but a very heavy piece of sprue. See if I need to tidy this up. Yes, I fucking do. Hey, that's good. Okay, I think that's all of the bits of the model I need to take off. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, hands starting to get sore. <laughs> I have to say, I'm, I'm not 100% still. I was going to say, it is, it is still a bit uh, touchy. The human body is a wonderful thing for its regenerative capabilities, but... Uh, yeah, it takes cut time. You can, cut your he actually did, yeah, he got me... Uh, he basically ma ma managed to split my, uh, my hand into two parts. Um, like, I was proper Abe's Odyssey in it. Because um, uh, I was like, you know, the uh, uh, basically this, th these two fingers here uh, work together, and these two, because he got me right in between these two fingers on the back of my hand, yeah. and in between the other two on the on the palm. So every time I tried to sp split them, I mean, it's a bit, it's a bit better now, but every time I tried to split them, um, like the wound would basically reopen, essentially. So uh, yeah, it's much better now. The uh, the stitches have come off. Uh, they serve the purpose, and I've got it down to just wearing plasters now. And of course, you have your your mittens. Oh yeah, it's just because it's cold. Well, they probably help with a bit Fuck. of compression. Uh, I haven't got the compression gloves on just because uh, trying to take them off would probably pull the gloves off with it. Oh, it would pull the gloves off. Okay. I assume you meant plasters, Dave. Yes, that's what I meant. Feel me and my uh, sarcastic. All right, he now has a head. Oh. Can get ahead in life. He can. Uh -huh. Ho ho! Yeah, so he's just drying at the minute and then I'll shove his weapons on. Nice. Yeah, I'll just uh, give him the old zoom in. Oh, Looking fancy, Dave. Yeah, this is the only way I can get like a a slightly okay picture for it. I was about I was about to say it, it does kind of look like a seventies VHS. Yeah, because <laughs> if I tried to bring it up close, even if I did this, it does nothing. It doesn't, it doesn't zoom. No, that's a. About the perfect distance, but it's still not great. I will get a better camera. I will. 
<clears throat> right. So yeah. Um, I don't know whether to start touching up the paintwork and then putting the weapons on, or whether I should put the weapons on and then touch up the paintwork. Weapons on, then touch up. That's my decision. Okay. Indeed. So I need to get the uh, shoulder pad on. Do love a good shoulder pad. too much. That's perfect. That's the one. Yes. Ha ha! Sounds like victory, Dave. Yeah, it's kind of victory. Yeah, I'll do. Okay, next. Need to get his uh, missile launcher in. So I have missile launches on both of these boys. And then on the commander unit I'll put the uh, the uh, radar mod module on. way around to put the guns, I wonder. Uh, yeah. Speaking of May. Oh yeah. I have been requested to be a guest painter. Oh. For the local games shop. Very nice. So there's, I believe there's going to be a couple of us who do it on, on like a rotation. Very nice. But each of us will come in and we'll be like, yo dudes, what up? Here's how we do this. You know, it's when you, when you put your mind to it and you actually, you know, take your time. You don't need to rush anything. This is what you can get from it. Nice. A lot of painting ends up being very, very uh, patience related. Indeed. If, if you don't have that patience, bro, you're just going to splatter your, your models. Make sure you get a, you get a plug in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Hey everyone, come on, come on, join us on Twitch every Monday. Well, that that you get you get all the Twitch plugging. It's uh because on Monday is your your thing. Well, yeah, but you know you, you do you do yours on Thursdays. This is you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Maybe should should I uh, should I give you a should I do a, a little flyer for you so you can stick something up in the shop? <laughs> no, I'm good. I think I get uh, currently plenty of. I can't say it. What is it? Exposure. That's it. <laughs> that word. Exposure. Uh. I'm not in the. Uh, um, Bush flasher kind of exposure, but uh, well, this, in the is a, this is a much finer brush. This <sighs> I 
I have to say, immediately this brush makes it so much easier to paint. Good purchase then. Oh yeah, this well, this one in particular is very fine. It's not it's not the finest brush, either. Oh, what the hell's going on there? I don't know. Some weird fluff coming off the model. It's probably when you dropped it on, on your slipper. Probably. But my god, what is this? <laughs> oh yeah, that's nice. Quite nice to be able to uh, paint on this uh, on this little box as well. Keeps it nice and steady for me. I'm enjoying that. When you find yourself something that, uh, that assists you in a way that you never thought it would, it's always very very helpful. Yeah, I might. Uh, I keep this little box for, uh, well, this is the box I keep my paints in, but I might uh, make sure it's around for painting, especially the bigger models. Right. Almost done. I'm down to my last touch ups. Nice. I've still got quite a bit to go. Just a few edging. Parts. Give a little bit of a highlight to some of the areas. Indeed. And hopefully, I don't just paint his eyeballs red by accident. So that would be such a pain in the ass to fix now that he's pressed together. Yeah. I did a proper shite job of this first time around. It's like whole like sides of the model that uh, the sides of the gun that I've just not bothered painting any of. Which is making it really hard now. I need to paint it around everything else without actually trying to paint over anything. Well, it's one of my good old multi part single casts, dude. Uh. I can't believe my brain just never fucking registered that. It's just like, you're saying something stupid, Patrick. But you don't realise you're saying something stupid. And now somebody's pointed out that you're stupid, Patrick. Uh, Roll no. with it. It was, it was a trap. I didn't want... I, I, I was like, will he say something uh, like unacceptable on stream? Probably not. So I think your stupidity did help. To defend it by my own, by yeah. my own foolishness. What I'm going to do with this then is I'm going to use a little bit of my texture paint. Get some astro granite on the on the go. And everybody's like, Patrick, that paint is super minging. So that's because it's full of gravel and sand. It is full of beans. What I've got to be careful of is that I don't instantly spread it up the legs of the bloody model. <laughs> spread it up the legs, lad. <laughs> yeah, just spread it up. Just go back into the, the classroom thing and saying, hoo, 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 you said spread. And legs. That's funny, that, that means two things. Okay, is that... No, it's not. Of course it's not, bloody hell. And you were about to say, is that it? Am I done? <laughs> no, it's, uh, I, thought, I thought I was done for this colour, but no, I'm going to need another splodge. At least you figured it out before you shut the pot. Well, I, I did shut the pot. I, I, I never keep the pots open while I'm painting. Splodge onto the little piece of cardboard, water it down, close the pot. 
I don't have the uh, I don't have a pallet like that. It's just a piece of cardboard, man. I know, but I just don't have one. And so it's looking at the vast quantities of cardboard in this room. Okay, so I all needs all, all needs to be is just a shiny piece of cardboard. I just don't have one, do you? Yeah, you can just go and find one. There's probably like loads of them in your kitchen. I don't, I don't understand. I don't have one. <laughs> Right. Let's get another splodge down. Painted the base before I stuck his face on. Like that movie face on. Yep. It's like a Nicholas Cage man. <laughs> it's just a legend. Yeah. But it's whether or not he's a legend for the right reasons. Like he will literally say yes to any script. And sometimes they're good, sometimes they're fucking terrible. But he'll own it anyway. Yeah. Bringing Out the Dead is still his fa It's still my favorite Nicolas Cage movie. Honestly, I don't really think I have like a favourite Nicolas Cage movie, though apparently, isn't he in the, the basically the Five Nights at Freddy's film? Oh yeah, yeah, he's in that, yeah. He's in D that, and he's going to be amazing in that, regardless. Yeah. But I, think, uh, I think Daddy said that he'd watch that. Um... Yeah, during one of the uh, other yeah. things that we did. But my favourite scene from any movie ever is the remake of The Wicker Man where he comes running out of the woods dressed as a bear and punches a small child in the face. Excellent. I know if we can't forget bees my eyes. <laughs> oh man. So I'm not gonna put that on. Well ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Here he is. Very nice. No. Rotate him round so you get his delicious shield in his backpack done. Very nice indeed. And that bad boy is sorted, and he can go with the commander now, who I had subtly placed upon the upon the table alongside him, only for reference, mind you. Yeah. When well, I've got the uh, the awful guy here next to me. But that does mean that essentially I have done two Space Marine models from my Andromeda set. Yay! <laughs> uh, I'm right. going to quickly nip to the loo. Go for it. Well, I can. <clears throat> so, yeah. This is a uh, third stream back for everyone. Um, we can't believe we missed this last week. I was so gutted, but I really couldn't paint. I was, uh, it was, it was bad. Machen's not joining us for a while. Um, he's going to be back apparently in April. So I'm just going to put the camera up so you can see me. Um, but we may have a guest host joining us to see uh, joining the paint club to cover us. Um, we may end up having four four hosts for the paint club. We've got just about enough space on the screen. And what I'll probably end up doing is I'll, uh, I'll set it up so that we've got all four of us there. And then if someone wants to show them something on the camera, it'll zoom in on them. Maybe. I have to figure it out. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, come on, really? I've just spotted, I've just finished with one colour and then I've just spotted a bit that I've missed. I hate that so much. No. Get it before the paint dries. Oh, there's a bit there as well. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, so. Oh. 
yeah, we um, we do this for anyone who's joining us, uh, just joining us. We do this every Monday at 6.30. Every s Sunday, <coughs> sorry, yeah, which included yesterday. Uh, at 11 in the morning, we do some Pro Evolution, which is lovely. Fabulous. Yeah. Had a good stream yesterday, didn't I? You did. It was good. You only got your arse handed to you once, and that was in... Hey, we came back. We came back. Won the game. You still, still pooped yourself at the beginning. Oh man, that was that was rough. Really rough. Right, uh, I need to do the black. I'll give uh, I'll give Paddy a quick uh, shout out. He does his at Thursdays. What time on a Thursday? I usually run mine at twelve p.m. GMT on Thursdays. Very nice. Whenever I'm not in meetings, I, I will join. I usually watch the VODs afterwards anyway. Well, especially when they end up uh, have, having big chunks of sound taken out of them. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, I think I was there for that one, so I didn't miss much. And you were, it was, it was essentially my second stream. Yeah. Because on the first one, you were like, yeah, Patrick, we should get this uh, this Twitch add-on thing there. And I'm like, oh, I sure. Give that, and I'll have some of that glory. Yeah. And then I had that glory, and then Twitch went, eh, sorry, no. Uh, apparently our program uh, has licensed music on it. Ridiculous. Like, Say what? That is, that is bad. When your own add-on, yeah, <laughs> not kosher. Yeah, an add-on specifically designed to avoid like getting DMCA'd. Gets DMCA'd. Not good. This is the future, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, the future of copyright law. Trying to get this uh, nice and neat and tidy so that I can start putting the gold highlights on. Well, I need to null oil it first, but. Of course. Right, that's something I'm going to actually try and do. What are you going to try and do? I'm going to add a little bit more definition to these dudes. Um, so I'm going to start adding white sections to their chest shields to give a bit more variety than them just being the big blue boys. Mm hmm The big blues. Uh, does that need to be black? Yes, it does. Just no, had to turn the model around just to see if, uh, if I'd painted over something accidentally. Uh, I don't paint it. Oh, no. You painted it, didn't you? Do you know what? I don't think that I don't think that was this time. I think that was uh, last time I was painting black. Poos. Uncle Poos. Yeah, so we do a little bit of touch up on these. It'll add some variety to the. Yeah. They will look different. They shall. Okay. Try not to paint over the, the previous details. Because that would just be done. Right, I just need to uh, paint his toenails with uh, black finger polish. Okay. I think that's all the black that needs doing. Just tidy the leg up a little tiny bit. Maybe just there. Yes, that's good. Nice. Okay. I'm going to say that's all the black that needs doing. I need to do red. And then touch up any gold bits that need doing, and then null oil, and then highlights. 
and then we're done. <laughs> I like lists, keep myself organised. Oh, welcome to the new viewers, by the way. I have spotted the uh, the viewer count go up. Hi, you're very welcome here. This is Bull's Paint Club, where we paint Warhammer. Uh, I am currently painting a Crisis Battle suit. Ha ha ha. My camera's I, not great, I apologise. And I am currently painting, well, I, I'm touching up my Indomitus Blade Guard Sergeant. Yep. Paddy's camera is amazing. By the way, you must tell me what model you've got because I will buy that. It is one of the Logitech ones. Yeah, I think I went. I just went for a cheap one. If you let me know the model number, I'll uh, I'll have I'll give it a quick look. I have to ask uh, War Rich about that model number. I have no recollection, for I do not have the box anymore. You can do a con uh, co uh, device manager situation, but don't worry oh. about that. Don't worry about that. Oh, God damn it. Just finished the black, and I've just noticed the biggest bit of black that wasn't painted. Luckily, the paint's still wet, so I can still go for it. Do I have... Oh, here we go. Don't want to close other apps. I'll, I'll leave that. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't faff around if, uh, for no reason. You can tell me afterwards. So you're looking at it and it's like, do you want to close all other apps to activate your camera? I'm like, no. No, thank you. <laughs> not yet. Not today. Hmm. Yeah, um, if you want to, you could tweet at, um, at bulls, uh, hashtag Bulls Paint Club. Um, and you can share your the images of your Warhammer with us, and we will marvel at your greatness. Well, I will, because <laughs> yeah. I'm terrible. I, sp I I started this club so that I could actually get on with painting some models. And you will always be improving. Yes. Because I certainly didn't start off like this. <laughs> it's been a very very long road. This is a very nice brush. I really like this brush. It's like, uh, there are smaller brushes here for like really super fine detail, but this one's like perfect for me. Have the eyeball brush. Yeah, it's just it's a little bit of fluff on the end there. Okay, uh, red. Going to get myself a little bit of corn red. I'm gonna just move my camera down a bit so you can see the models and what I is doing. This is the one I'm working on. This is the one I did last time. Well, the, the last battle suit that I did. Got it there for reference. This is the one I'm working on. See, that's something I always find a bit awkward right at the beginning of painting something is you've either got the reference on your computer screen or you don't have a reference. <laughs> and then you have to hope for the best that the first time you paint a model, it actually comes out the way that you hope it looks. Yeah. And after that, then you're okay. Because then you can uh, you can reference your original model. That's the problem I had with my tank, uh, the Lehman Russ. The first time I tried to paint it, like I just sort of, I just had a go and it just didn't work. The 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 color scheme. Yeah. So I had to uh, rework it when we brought it onto this stream, and I ended up really liking the uh, the uh, the outcome, which is just up here. Looks really good. Oh, there's my lemon Ross. Oops, sugar butties. to bring it out uh, away a bit. Whilst it's I paint this. <laughs> there you go, the lemon Ross with the uh, I quite like the the, the highlight, the uh, the little white sections in between the uh, the different tiger stripes. Really bring, the, really makes it pop. Those edges make it look amazing. Yeah, it's good. I've got another Lehman Ross in, it's still in its box, which hasn't even been primed. I don't think so. I need to uh, get that sprayed yeah. at some point. I think that one's just going to be a standard, um, standard Lehman Ross with like the uh, plasma cannon type situation on the on the top. This one was supposed to be like the, um, I was going to use this as a tank commander. 
Um, like it was going to be like the HQ choice, but I'm not sure whether the rules have changed since the last time I started building the army. There is. You you can have it. Yeah. The way the way that the um the fourth not fourth edition Jesus Christ fourth edition. The way that the newest edition have is you have battalion setups. Yeah. And each. Each battalion setup is its own tiny little uh, army list. Yeah. So, for instance, you'll have like a patrol list, which will give you your good old fashioned one HQ, two troop choices as, as a necessity. And then you can expand that out to have the additional four troop choices, the three fast attack, the three heavy. And then you can have like a heavy one, which has got a big HQ choice, and mm-hmm. then you like three heavies minimum. Damn. Uh, yeah, it's like a heavy support uh, Italian choice, and you can chop and change between which ones you mix, because it's not just a single standard army list and um, army builder. You basically squish all these little. Diff- like all the different battalions together to form your army so if you want let's say if you want to run a cult of speed with orcs mm-hmm. you you run down the uh like the scout one which has got a lot of fast attack choices on it aye so you can have like your commander and, and then obviously you'll have to go into the the codexes to see what you can have i am most certainly sure that the imperial guard codex has HQ choices as tanks. Yeah, uh, because I'm going to do mine as a basically full on. Yeah, um, and, yeah. It's just going to be an army of tanks. I don't think it'll be useful on the on tabletop, but I'm going to have. Uh, I'm going to get myself a couple of basilisks, I think, or at least one. Just so I can have one. I just love the I, just, I love the look of them, and I loved using them in um, Dawn of War. They were like my favourite things to have. Oh yes, spot off you say halfway across the map. Boom. <laughs> I just oh. used to um, like cover an entire like a, an, a, a, the main entrance to me base with just a constant artillery barrage. Anything that tried to like rush me just got like destroyed. <laughs> so yeah, that's my uh, my Imperial Guard army. That's the uh, the paint scheme. It's like snow camo almost, urban snow. I would. Yeah, it's it's designed for a snow world. Um, so it's like concrete stone snow is uh, is what what I was going for. So a bit like Hoff. Cold actually. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that was shit. Oh man. Always worth it. <laughs> Where's the gold colour gone? Uh, it's probably hiding from that awful bloody. Gym. Yeah. One of the viewers left because of that one. <laughs> oh. I don't blame them. I want to leave. Can't get a boss. Ah, I'm not a boss. Just Where a. This... No, come on. It's a club. We're all equal. Don't tell me I have power. I'll go mad. Go mad, then? <laughs> Surely we're already mad. Oh, we're all mad here. You don't have to be mad, but it helps. Oh, I'm making a total twat of this. Come on. Calm painting, yes. Ooh, that's the word. Paint this gold bit here that I forgot to paint. Let's just 
reinforce that bit there. Oh yes, there's a bit there that needs doing. Yes. While we're here, I'll start up one of the other models that I said I had. Yep. Well, I say one of the other models, like many of the other models. Mm. I've agreed to deal with them. I have got so many things to paint, and I'm still thinking, considering, of getting another model. Another set of um, models. I equally am also considering this. I would like to get some. Uh, uh, my first fantasy Warhammer ever. I've never owned any fantasy Warhammer, and uh, I'm tempted to go for some dwarves. Ah, now here's the thing, Mr. Dave. Okay. If you're talking about the Age of Sigmar stuff, there are two kinds of dwarves. Oh? Both of them I think you would find enjoyable. Because there are the ones which are essentially all the berserkers. Okay. They ginger, ginger hair and their slayers. And, and they ride sort of giant fire salamanders and have big axes and all that. Uh huh. And then there are the steampunk air pirates. Right. Which have flying ships and guns and, and little dudes with like hot air balloons. Okay. So you might want to have a look at them. They're like, I think they're like the Ethermancers or something. Right. See, I, they... I wanted to go for some slayers. Some of those uh, red haired, um, shouty, screamy boys. They were the ones I was going for, but I also enjoyed uh, the idea of, like, you know, steam tanks and shit. Yeah, the technology. So, is there no way you can have a combination army of both? I do not know. Because I remember that dwarves were just an army, weren't they? Dwarves themselves were just an army. Plus, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be playing Age of Sigmar. I'd be playing Classic. I'm not sure about... Um how they would fit into the classic. But they're, they're certainly more I mean, skirmish-based in Age of Sigmar than they are. Yeah, but, I mean, obviously, you know, they can't. They haven't just written off all of the old models, have they? It's all... Uh, Not all of them. I don't know enough about it, but, like... There are a lot of them that have taken a, uh, a bit of a pounding. And a back seat. But they kind of just said that they kind of just said that uh, the, 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 this whole army is now not an army anymore. Oh well, they are they are bringing out the the old worlds. Oh shit, that's Guinness. So, that's the other golden need. Uh, where's the one I just had? And I was literally just using it. Where, where's it gone? Oh, there it is, yeah. Balthazar. Sort of like the the old worlds stuff that they're pondering yeah. with is essentially back to the normal fancy stuff. Yeah. So the old models will be usable in all of those, most likely. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure that they'll end up having like a whole massive set of new models as well. Uh, I might wait. I might wait then. You know, wait, wait for the, uh, the new models to come out and get some of the shiny ones. Yeah, because I, th I think the, the Slayer Fire Lords, yeah. is what they're called, are purely Age of Sigmar stuff. Alright, oh, okay. Oh, I, I just I remember seeing the uh, the Dwarvy Boys, um, and um, just seeing those Redhead Boys and going, mm, I want them. Yep. I'll wait until they've sort decided what they're going to do with the fantasy universe. And then I'll get them then. Right. Um, let's have a quick look around before I start null oiling. See if there's anything I need to paint, be painting. You're bringing sexy back into what they'd be doing. All right. Uh, there's a couple of bits of... Yeah, a couple of bits of XV88 that I need to paint on this before I... Start oiling it up. Dad. 
Dup, dup, dup. Greasy boy. Yeah. I always overdo the oil. And I know it. I know that everyone says, you know, I'll oh, just splodge it on. You can't go wrong, but you really can. Yeah, it it depends on the model. For the most part, there are times when you can just completely overpower something with. Yeah, I mean, this is quite a quite a light color XV, and when you paint over it with um, with Norn oil, it um, it does basically. Sh uh, turn it into a darker shade so you're either basically recolouring the whole model or you're going to end up with just lines of uh, of dark yes and sort of like patchy splats yeah. of, of darkness where it's essentially just come off the brush yeah it hasn't been spread yeah I get I've had that a lot with the Agrax Earth shade which is why I'm somewhat a bit more sparing with it yeah, I just, um, I, I don't know how to avoid it, really, because um, it, when you use, when you use it, it, it happens, and I can't really, I can never seem to spread it so it doesn't, I think the best doesn't way leave to marks. avoid as much of it as possible is once you've drawn the brush, like, down, yeah, uh, and, and covered it, draw it down again, and then take a bit of either blotting paper or some kind of tissue or whatever and just try and draw it into the tissue right so that you absorb a lot of the excess that you didn't want okay and that means that you're, you're spreading it across the surface of the model yeah but then you're just not leaving it to pool okay I may try that on this, on this guy see if that works for me the other way that I've seen the washing done is if you just specifically avoid like covering the whole like plates and that. Yeah. And just go down the lines that you like in the recesses that you want <clears throat> shape. Yeah, I, I think that's how I've tried to do it in the past. And it just leaves like a, a shadow on all of the creases. Right. So that's the model based. It's all the base coats and stuff done. Now all I need to do is get the null oil out, which is inside the box that this is sat on. Haven't thought this through. <coughs> there we go. Null oil. Oily, oily time. Right, which brush? Should I go for a big brush or a small brush? If you're trying to just follow the edges, mm. the smaller, thinner brushes are far better. Okay. If you just want to go whole hog, then, then whack out your, your large creature brush. I'm going to try this one, sort of like a... It's, it's quite pointy. Um, but it's also a little bit bigger than the uh, the fine brush that I was using. Citadel equivalent of a standard brush. Yeah. Okay, so let's just dip, dip, dip. Right, let's start going into the creases. did not exactly intend to collect ultramarines. <laughs> no one intends to collect ultramarines. It's just, it just happens. It's the first it, army that everyone gets. It just happens, but technically that, that's not the truth for me. Oh, yeah. Because the first Space Marine army that I got was a homebrew. It's my Dark Stars. Oh, okay. They are black armour with white face plates and almost like a starburst on the shoulder okay have you got any of them to hand or are they somewhere uh, i can i can get my champion which obviously came with the, the command set 
I don't think he has a white face though, I think he's got a silver face because he's part of the command. Uh, one moment. No worries. Be interesting to see. I do enjoy watching it at Oh no, look at everyone's homebrew armies. They're the, they're the most interesting ones to look at, really. I always find, anyway. That's just me. I like it when people custom for custom make stuff. Always feels a bit more personal. Obviously, this turns out to be a bit weird because the the three models that I have easily accessible are this tech marine with the servo harness. Oh, nice. Who is kind? He's mostly red because obviously he's a tech marine. But the majority of my Dark Stars had grow work on the left shoulder, mm. which is sort of visible there. Yeah. He is covered in varnish, so he's super shiny. Oh, God. <laughs> varnish? Yep. That's, that's something I've never even considered doing online. My champion, who actually has silver face. Nice. Instead of... Uh, that and a Terminator, Terminator Captain, who is helmetless. Come on, you guys. Oh, there we go. nice. And, and that's the the symbol that I've got on the shoulders of them. Oh, cool. So it's a bit like a Union flag. Almost. So it's like a black and white. Image. Yeah. But for the most part, they are just black with white face plates. So. Huh. And I armed most of them with melter guns. Which would lean more towards their founding being salamanders. Yeah. Oh, I have, I have just, I've they just covered the shit out of this model now. Oh, no, the no. front of it is just, uh, just utterly good. I'm going to get some very good. Yeah, I'll block that out. Oh, that seems to have sorted it a bit. Yeah, that's good. And then when I dry brush over it, it should s resolve the issue. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, technically my first army was Tyranids. Oh, yeah. So I have all my Tyranids. That's a weird choice, actually. Ah, the space aliens, man, space aliens. Yeah. Gotta give some love to things with more than six arms. <laughs> it just one hugs. Damn. Any of the viewers in the room, what was your first army? How did you get into it? Being released as well. Yeah, I mean, Space Marines were my favorite, my first army, and uh, it was Smurfs because I was boring. And I've only recent, in recent times, like, like decades after I stopped playing tabletop, uh, got a second army because oh. I read the uh, the Gaunt's Ghost books and fell in love with Imperial Guard, oh, and yes. decided that um, that was something I wanted. I wanted a, a, a like some a collection of Imperial Guard boyos, and it was a sp it was a particular book that made me fall in love with. Uh, it was a particular book and the Dawn of War game, uh, the first Dawn of War, obviously, that uh, made me fall in love with the tanks specifically. It was um, a book which involved a um, a tank convoy, but Gaunt's Ghosts. Um, and it was, um, was it Vitrian Bluebloods, I think they're called. And uh, yeah, that was such a good book. But yeah, I absolutely just adore the, uh, the I, I just, yeah, I just adore the Imperial Guard. I adore the common soldier. Yeah. And uh, it just... Hive cities as well make me make me smile because I mean 
the Eisenhorn and uh, Ravenna books uh, are really good as well. Dan Abner is such a great author. I will suck the dick of his books all day long. I think he did uh, one of the first um, Hor Horus Heresy books, didn't he? Dan Amnett has done some of the some of the Horus Heresy books. They all seem to rotate around the the usual sort of stable of writers that they've got. I'm pretty yeah. sure Fight of the Eisenstein was one of his. Yeah, I think uh, he did one of the first uh, Horus Heresy books, and I think in an interview um, he said. Um, when he wrote that book, he didn't know how to write Space Marines. Um, like he, he um, like they they came off as like weird, like re they came off really weirdly. Um, and um, sort of as if they didn't have like any personality or anything. Mm. Um. And then he uh, he said in late in later books when he wrote um, there was an Eisenhorn book where um, Eisenhorn ran into a, a few Space Marines um, and apparently after that point he um, you know by that point he was much more comfortable writing Space Marines. So. You could actually give them more, more of the personality that they do have. Yeah. As much as they might be you know super soldier space monks. They are pretty interesting for the most part. I mean, you get some of the the more in-depth characters. Yeah. And how they actually struggle half the time in their legions and things like that in the Horus Heresy book. Right. I'm getting the old Citadel brush that's uh, the old flathead thing. I'm getting that for the dry brushing. Retirement of any brush. <laughs> Towel light ochre. Let's dry brush. Ah, oh, shit, I just stretched my finger a bit too far there. Oh, it hurt. It's like you are now relegated yeah. to this noble task before we take you out the back and, and shoot you in the face. As, as all, of the, all of the bristles start to make their escape for freedom. Yeah. Right, there we go. I've dried the brush off. Let's start uh, working some highlights on, I suppose. Not quite dry enough for my liking. Yeah, I, can quite, I can quite happily tell you that um, I believe War Riches actual first army was orcs oh because he just used my stuff and i was the one getting all the other things previously yeah oh no wait wait no it wasn't orcs tell a lie ladies and gentlemen what was it go on it was eldar well richard's stuff was eldar oh shit the fucking bad and speaking of that that is a an army that we have that is sorely needing TLC. A lot of love needs to go back into that arm because it is a bit battered by the ages. So I might be cheeky and get some Eldar. And you might see those here mm. on the stream. Oh my god, that's. I've just done my first bit of dry brushing that, that's worked really well. And that's... You see, I've screwed up a lot of this model. Like, the dry brushing has gone horribly, but... This bit of, that, that bit of dry brushing there was dead nice. It takes a while to really get the butter zone. Mm -hmm. How much paint you have on the brush? Yeah, oh, this is this is the perfect. This is the sweet spot right here. It's just leaving enough on the corners and the raised areas to. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Give you that tasty definition, bro. All right, let's just get rid of that. Okay.
See, I'm also, I'm, I'm so torn about what I want to get for the next load of models that I want. Because reminding myself of the Eldar makes me want to, you know, bring them back up to their former glory. Yeah. But then I'm also reminded of Meteorinids, which I want to improve on greatly because, well, as I said before, who doesn't like a, a horde of six armed crazy creatures? Just one hugs. <laughs> I mean, I prefer Tyranids to the uh, to Necrons, but I know you've also got those boys as well. I have more. I believe I've got more of those. My Tyranid army is uh, falling behind quite a bit. Oh. I've certainly got them on Space Marines now. <laughs> yeah. There you go, that's how you do it. And inevitably I have started Sisters of Battle. <laughs> I really need to find out what's in that big box set. <laughs> I want it. Oh, that was a lot of pain. Oh, there's a lot of pain on there, goddammit. Spread it around, spread it around, spread it around. I'm going to have to tidy that up now. Just fucking covered um, a big section of black with uh, with orange. Gooted. Well, at least you know that you can just go over it with something that will cover it quite happily. Oh, yeah. It's not like I'm covering any, uh, any gold bits. Oh my god, I've got dry brushing down, I'm happy. This is, if nothing else good happens tonight, I've learned how to properly dry brush. How's that? Glory be. For the greater good, Dave. Yeah, for the greater good. Nice. Right, so now I just need to fix some of this. <laughs> Alright, so I'll get my detail brush out now. In fact, I'll probably get that. I'll get the smallest possible detail brush out, just so I know I'm definitely not making any mistakes. I think this is the smallest one. Boink! Look how tiny it is! It's so tiny! So tiny. It's still small. Right, so uh, fix the red bits. <coughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> You're, you all right? Okay. It's going well. Chef having a cough. Lady person strikes. Indeed. Right. Just Speaking of coughing things. Oh yeah. I have, I have my vaccination appointment. Wonderbar. When's that? The thirtieth of this month. Great, I haven't got mine yet. That's I it. Am I might find. You what, sorry? I am kind of surprised that you don't have yours. Yeah, well, I, I got a, um, a text off the GP like two months ago saying, I'll get, um, you'll, you'll get a phone call with an appointment in the next three weeks, and that phone call never happened. So it's probably worth talking to the GP and going, yeah, listen, can, uh, can you get this sorted out, yo? Yeah. What, what with. What with the, the asthma? Yeah. I'm a sweaty pale boy. I need my I need my injection. It's 
Mine's tr- right. This is a kind of dumb thing because yeah. I I got a, a text message basically saying you are now eligible to receive this. Please set up your appointment. Blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, I know for a fact purely because my folks are going to the vaccination center in a town not too far away from me called Ashton, which is about five minutes away from me yeah. by driving. Right? There's a vaccination zone in there, like a center. I, however, who live at the opposite end of Bedlington, yeah. but still about five minutes away from Ashington, have to go through to Newcastle, to the Center for Life, okay. to get my vaccine. So I, I essentially have to travel an hour, plus walking pace, because I'm not driving through to Newcastle, because that's a horrific, bloody spaghetti tangle of, <laughs> of roads that I do not want to deal with. Yeah. It's like, guy, seriously, guys? Yeah, look at your own map of vaccinations. <laughs> I mean, it's probably. I mean, there there will be a reason for it. I'm absolutely sure, but yeah, it's a pain in the ass, isn't it? Out the back of a caravan, I'm assuming. <laughs> Corvus Black. So some guy called Sven. Yeah, this is vaccination. And he's got his. Uh, his doctorate sort of written on the back of a pizza box, like his certificate. <laughs> I am a real doctor, yes? Yes, I am real doctor. I have injections for you. And then he just stabs you with a needle full of uh, Fanta lemon. <laughs> the best flavour. Tangum. You have been tangled. You are good for coronavirus. Yes. Corona no more. Oh, it's just literally an injection full of Dettol. We call this the Trump special. 99% of germs. You are not a germ, are you? I'm also a blood cell and... (laughs) And everything else. Okay, there's the black dot. I think I've only got one more colour to do and then it's done. Huzzah! Meanwhile, I'm just getting all of the blue done on this. Yep. Right, where is finally the picture I keep, the, the not picture, the paint I keep picking up. Ugh! Apologies for the rumbling noise while I shake this. Just opens, opens up your wallet and there's a photograph of the paint. The picture I keep to remind me. <laughs> right. Guiana's gold. To highlight all of the goldy bits. Nim nim nim. Don't know why I said nim nim nim. I'm not going to paint it. I'm not going to eat the paint. But num 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 anyway. Because it is a tasty colour, Dave. Yes, yes, yes. Oh shit, nearly tipped the whole uh, thing away. Okay. Probably need a bit more water in there. It is only a highlight after all. You don't want it to go on too thick. Oh, going on thick. Oh yeah. With two seeds. <laughs> Get that on there. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, the shoulder pad's done. Nice. There's going to be a lot of touch up on these. (laughs) Oh man, they're always, they're always those, man. Never get it right first time. It's, it's the faces, like the helmets. They're um. Yeah. I, oh, the face on the on the on the uh, you know the the the, the tank guy. Yeah. 
Uh, it, the Nuln oil has just made it like it just looks like a chimney sweep. Well, if you think of where he's sitting, yeah, it, it could be it could be realistic. Behind the battle cannon, I say battle cannon. No, it's the Punisher cannon, which is even worse because it's a giant chain gun. Yeah, behind a giant chain gun, that just sort of makes sense, I guess. It's just got gunpowder marks on his face. Yeah. So yeah, it kind of makes sense. I might not, I might not, uh, in inverted commas, fix it. Might leave it as, leave it as is, because it kind of makes sense, I suppose, doesn't it? It's just uh, dusted gently with the rocket fuel that comes out the back of those shells. Yeah. Apologies if you can hear um, a dog having a wolf. My uh, husky seems to be asleep and is dreaming about chasing things. I was going to say, I know he's just a hiccup there, but... Uh... Yes, he's dreaming about having balls for the last time. He, he's dreaming about uh, chasing his... chasing his last girlfriend dog. He's, he's running away from the vet in his dream. He's like, no! Don't take them! They're mine, you can't have them. He'll never play fetch again. Oh yeah, he'll, ne he'll never want to. He'll never want to uh, run after a ball again, will he? PTSD dog. <laughs> runs after the tennis ball only to just like curl up in a ball. When it picks it up, it's like. Ah, uh, I remember these. Yeah. I mean, I I I, I would feel mean, but. After the week he put me through, I don't care. Look, he bit you pretty good. He got you pretty good. Yeah, and then I, and then he kept me awake for like a lot of time on my week off. I need to add. Dun, dun, dun. So yeah, on my week off, I think I slept less than I did than I would on a normal week. Fun times. Get all that paint on there, and I'll spread it round. Yep. So there was eight on that. Oh, oh. Big back click. Click. Oh, multiples on the shoulders as well. Oh, nice. You'll feel oh, that later. He's old. Well, middle-aged bones. God, I'm 35 this year. <laughs> not oh. pleased with this. I'm not. That that, I'm not many years behind you, mate. Don't worry. It's all good. You're still in your frame, Dave. You I mean, I'm, I'm really not. Right. It's a shame that I don't have my Tau here, but I'm pretty sure that I've sent images of Tau that I do have. Yeah. Because it's, it's really, really weird that they kind, kind of have a very similar colour to yours. Yeah. Like, just looking at the way it is, but... The majority of mine is gold, with um, oh, pallid green highlights. Right. Very, very subtle changes, but they still kind of look that, that browny sort of. I mean, this is the standard tau color. I've not gone. I've not gone as uh, as mad as I did with me uh, me imperial guard. It's literally this is pretty much standard tau. All right, I think that this model is done. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a, uh, a picture of this, whack it onto the uh, the WhatsApp, 
And then I'll bring the WhatsApp screen up for us. Gonna kind of look beautiful. Oh, yeah. Actually, that might be something for me to do as well to take a proper. Yep, yeah, if you get yourself a picture as well, I'll bring up them up at the end of the stream. See, I can get a better picture than that. That's better. No, oh, it doesn't. It didn't want to. Didn't want to take for some reason. I've been having that a few times. Yeah, what's up? Uh, the camera thing is a bit derpy. Right, so let's bring the camera back up to my face. Hi. The bigger problems that I've been having is when I've been trying to upload things onto Instagram, mm. and there's a. It's almost like a fifty-fifty chance that it's going to corrupt one of the pictures, but it huh. always comes out. It always comes out fine on Instagram, but in my phone, there's like this massive sort of like half the screen is like horrible green and purple pixelation. That's as weird. If it, as if there was like a static flash. Anywho, here we go. Oh, sorry, I'm using the wrong cursor there. There is Mr. Badger's picture. Check out that sexy boy. Nom nom nom. Look at that. Look at that bad boy. From the back, you can see him there with his shield. Very nice. And then uh, my towel boy here. Save that well, thank you very much. It's uh, I don't know if it's if it's uh, if it's better or worse. In fact, you know what? That is better, a lot better than the last one I did, for the simple fact that the um, dry brushing is a lot better. Like it's you can't see streaks and shit anywhere. Yeah, which is nice. One thing that is a difference as well between that one and the other one that you had yeah. is when you did the highlights for that one, you did the highlights by dry brushing. Yeah. Whereas on the other one, you edged it, which yeah. made it stand out a lot more than what it does on that. So that's yeah. a much more subtle highlight. And it looks much better, I think. But yeah. Do you think this is a good place to end it? I do. We have been going for over two and a half hours. Two and a half hours, yeah. That's that's the usual time we go for. So, uh, right. Let me stop the uh, the classical music and uh, whack on our ending credits music. Oh, there we go. Boom. So, um, oops, that looks a bit derpy, doesn't it? Oh, there you go. So, thank you so much, everyone who's uh, who's been here watching. I um, thank you so much for the lurky lurkers. Um, not so many in chat today, but that's fine. We just we're just here to paint and, and enjoy ourselves. Uh, we do this every single Monday at uh, at six thirty in the uh, in the PM GMT. Uh, if you enjoyed what you see here, please whack that follow button. Every follow counts right now. Um, on Wednesday, we will be doing our multiplayer stream with uh, some of the other guys. I think Daddy said he was up for it. Warwich is probably going to be up for it as well. Um, we'll see if Mev's in, uh, in work or not. We'll see what's going on. Um, every Saturday, well, most Saturdays, I'm, I might I might not make it every Saturday. Uh, I do a Let's Play Saturday stream, and every single Sunday, every single Sunday. 11 o'clock uh, in the morning, we play Pro Evolution. Mr. Badger, do you want to do a bit of a promotion? Uh, on Thursdays from 12 p.m. GMT, I take over my own little uh, painting stream, so join me on that. Uh, if, if you find this interesting, uh, it will just be a collection of different models from different games. I am currently starting to run through the Resident Evil 2 board game. So, he is that. Join me for that. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we love you all, um, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Toodles.